Hello guys and welcome back and today I want to talk about Linux Station. Now for those of you that have been following this channel for a while you know that I talk about the brand Synology and QNAP quite a lot. They're quite different brands in the grand scheme of things with Synology aiming at the far more user friendly, no hassle, no fuss, no your network knowledge and experience just making things very very straightforward and easy whereas the QNAP brand although it is very very easy um, it is also designed more ever so slightly more towards Android and Windows users who like to have a lot more configurability and a lot of the tinkering debugging and options and configuration that you find with those software platforms it's one of the main reasons that I compare Synology versus QNAP to be akin to something like Apple versus Android but one of the um, platforms that I very rarely talk about is Linux, because Linux is pretty much largely what all NAS is based on. They're all proprietary in their own way. They've made their own trademark applications and images and logos and graphics to make it very much their own, but it's all based on Linux. And with a number of QNAP NASs, with and without HDMI ports, predominantly ones that have got Intel-based CPUs, but not always them, um, you can install an application known as Linux Station. Now, Linux Station gives you the ability to create multiple virtual uh, environments on your QNAP NAS that can be accessed as desktops. So, for those that have never used Linux, it's come a long, long way in its universal access and GUI, a uh, graphical user interface, to a point now where it is remarkably similar to that uh, to Windows and, say, Google Chrome on Chromebooks. And the ability to actually have a remote desktop, a virtual machine of this, is really, really useful. And hence why I was very impressed a little while ago when I learned that QNAP are now supporting Ubuntu 18 on their NAS. So once you install your QNAP NAS and get it up and running and you go to the application center, there's a free application called Linux Station. And from Linux Station, once you've installed it, you can choose to install one of three different Linux kernels. And these three kernels all give you a different um, Ubuntu experience. Now, the one we're going to look at predominantly today is the newest one of the three, Ubuntu 18. From here, you can set up uh, network connectivity. You can set up the resolution of the screen you're looking at, increase it and decreasing it accordingly, as well as audio output if you're using a NAS that has speakers connected or has speakers on it, such as the TBS 453DX. From here, you can access your Linux dis desktop interface, your Ubuntu uh, GUI. Now, you've got two options, really. One, you can set it up, you access this VM via the HDMI port on your QNAP NAS if you have a NAS on an HDMI port. Or, as in the case of this rack mount NAS that I'm using today, you can go directly to a remote desktop. And from here, access that virtual machine of Ubuntu on your NAS. Now, it's worth mentioning a few things. First and foremost, I am using Windows PC with OBS recording here in the background. The result is that a lot of the resources are being consumed during the course of this video. So don't be surprised if things seem a little bit choppy in the performance department of this video. It's nothing to do with the QNAP or Ubuntu. It's because my NAS, oh sorry, the PC, is using a lot of system resources to record this footage as well as run this virtual machine in the browser window. Uh, second thing to bear in mind is I still have five or six NASs running continuously around me for the that large scale backup video that I'm working on that's going to be released soon. Consequently, there's a little bit of harm in the background from those NASs and I apologize in advance. But let's go straight forward into our virtual machine here, our Linux machine with Linux Station. Now, if you like, we can open up system resources while this is running to show you just how much impact this is having on the NAS right now. So the CPU isn't getting, being utilized too much, but the memory is taking quite a pounding. I believe I've got four gig of memory on this NAS, but I would need to double check that to get more precise information. But from here, we've now got this desktop interface that can be accessed via this link on the network. You can also set it up that this link can be accessed over the internet and therefore have this Linux, v, um, this Linux VM and graphical user interface and desktop accessible anywhere in the world. Now, once again, Linux is free, uh, and Ubuntu 18 is also free, and you can install loads of different applications. Lots of applications arrive pre-installed, such as Google Chrome, Kodi, 
And what's particularly interesting is this QTS. From here, we can access the NAS from within the VM, but it goes one better. If you go into the folder structure of this virtual machine, this Ubuntu uh, Linux station virtual machine, we can access the folders on the NAS. So from here within this, you can access the folders on your NAS, which means you aren't having, in, or as you find in the case of most virtual machines, the need to set up some sort of mapped network driver and iSCSI. You can just access the directories of your NAS from within the Ubuntu 18 uh, graphical user interface and desktop. So here, we're back on QTS here running in the background. And again, multiple instances of Linux station can be run with individual users and everyone can have them running on the same NAS. Now, from here, as mentioned, you can install lots of different applications. For example, LibreOffice is an equivalent to Google Docs and Microsoft Office that's got Excel document, Word document, PDF viewing, um, slideshows, that sort of thing. But you can also install more applications as you choose. There's updates available for this software right now that I haven't run on purpose. But on top of that, you can install things like VLC, WinRAR, pretty much any application mainstream that you can think of, there is a Linux alternative. So if we go to uh, the store, from here they've got their app center. And from here, you can install lots of apps. Once again, I apologize for the rather spotty um, playback here of the recording of this video. But again, a lot of system resources are being consumed for this screen recording. I really got to invest in a capture card, to be honest. So say you want to be, you want to look at photography. So from here, we can look at the applications available to install almost all of them completely for free to let us edit files and photos within our virtual machine. Uh, our virtual cont uh, contained Ubuntu Linux machine. So we can then edit files that are on the NAS thanks to the file editor we saw earlier and use these programs to edit them. And again, the impact of a Linux station uh, virtual Ubuntu machine is significantly less than that of a traditional virtual machine using virtualization station. Another thing that I've been running here in the background that's going to come up in a future video is I've been in the process of installing the uh, My Media application. And for those that aren't aware, this is the ability to create uh, a link between your NAS and the likes of Amazon Alexa. So you can play all the music on your NAS directly from the Amazon Alexa interface and play out of the speaker on your Amazon Alexa. Definitely something that you guys should be looking into. And again, the more powerful the NAS you use and the more system resources you want to add to the Linux VM, the better it will perform. But it's worth mentioning that again, if you have HDMI out, you've now got a standalone machine just by adding a keyboard and a mouse. And again, all of this is free. You don't have to buy some Windows VM. You don't have to get a bunch of extra software. This is all included with your NAS. It's really straightforward, it's really, really easy, and I do recommend it. And again, I've done a few videos in the past, and I will be running different bespoke applications in the background uh, for future videos. But this has been Ubuntu version 18 on a QNAP NAS. If you've got any questions or things you want me to run, or you want to hang around in the next few weeks for that My Media video, then by all means, stick around for that. But do enjoy my other videos, and do take advantage of Linux Station if you own a QNAP NAS or planning buying one soon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.